This is a case where there was a penetrating trauma uh, due to a sickle and this patient was referred to me almost a week later. As you can see, there is a large wound with some uh, debris over it as well as there is a traumatic cataract. We decided to take him up for surgery and doing and at this point I am trying to cut off all the membranes over the wound and also perform wound toilet. It's so very important when you are suturing these wounds, the one, one big complication is epithelial ingrowth. So there has to be a very very good wound toilet. After this I am going ahead and uh, very very carefully suturing the entire length of the corneal tear with 10 0 nylon. You have to make sure that you place each suture tangential to the direction of the tear. The tear is not exactly linear as you can see but it has a few curves here and there and you have to suture accordingly. I suture both ends of the tear first and then go ahead and suture in between. As you suture, try, try your best not to lose the chamber. And suture as atraumatically as possible. Once done, I go ahead and place a paracentesis wound and stain the capsule. I then wash off the trypan blue and express the air bubble with HPMC and fill the chamber with HPMC. I do a little bit of blunt dissection on the other side to try and separate the iris from the wound. And now in the intact ca capsule I am going ahead with the help of a cystitome and a pediatric rexus forceps. I am fashioning a capsular rexus. As you can see there is a tear on the other side and you have to be a little careful. Now place another paracentesis wound and very gently hydrate the cortex. This is an effort to loosen all the cortex for easy removal. I am doing it from both sides, that is from via both the paracentesis. You really have to spend a lot of time here and do it extremely carefully. Since I feel that there is no significant nucleus, I go ahead with my bimanual and very gently start aspirating the cortical fibers. Take care not to pull on the capsule and as you can see because of this corneal tear, uh, the cornea tends to hydrate. So usually I bring my bottle a little down. I don't want uh, the irrigation to be going at a very uh, high pressure in such cases. Even so, you can see the cornea hydrating and it is becoming a little difficult to visualize. The iris prolapsing through the uh, side port actually makes matters worse. I place another uh, paracentesis for easy access for unreachable cortex and go ahead and very very carefully keep aspirating
some of these maneuvers are more more than visualization it's more like a feel that you have to go once i am satisfied that i have removed uh, all the cortex i extend the one of the paracentesis wound with my 2.8 blade and place a foldable single piece i hole within the bag i know i have an adequate rexus i don't have to go for a <clears throat> three piece lens although that would have been i think a better decision however i have already gone in with a single piece and i have to make do with this it is an effort to try and get this trailing haptic into the bag especially since i can't exactly see uh, really well under these circumstances i then try and remove whatever cortex that i can see and also the hpmc sweep across the iris on the other side to get it out of the paracentesis and here i am trying to cut any membranes or attachments of the iris to the wound kindly notice not shown in the video is that i have already buried the knots of the sutures within the corneal tissue i'm using visco to try and separate uh, whatever attachments there are the iol is tends to be looking to see i will seems to be you know, a little displaced but i wouldn't worry about this these things usually settle down and uh, more manipulation in such a case i think is unwarranted finally put in my intracameral antibiotic and hydrate the wound thank you very much